People ask me all the time, if someone ghosts them, should you keep pursuing them? So here's my question, why pursue that? People ghost because they don't have the skills to talk it out and it's unfortunately a big trend. It's happening to so many people. And I feel like stop trying to convince people to like you because do you really want people to be your friends who you had to convince to like you? So let's step back a second. So rather than pursuing them, let's talk about the recovery process because I'm here to tell you you're fabulous and you don't deserve this. Hi, I'm Caroline McGuire and I'm here to talk about all things friendship and ADHD. We have these ADHD traits and we believe that because of those ADHD traits, we deserve less. That's not true. And I totally get it, being dumped hurts, Never hearing from someone hurts, you feel rejected. Every time the text message comes through, every time you do something that you've done with that friend, you literally can't stop thinking about it. Whether a friend is distancing themselves without explanation or ghosting you, or whether they stop seeing you, or whether you have an argument, breakups are hard at any age. And I wanna talk about how we can move forward and recover and maybe find people who treat us better. So one, don't assume it's your fault. I think this happens with ADHD a lot. So many people struggle with relationships that we often assume something is our fault. Don't accept automatically full responsibility because a relationship is two people, it's a two-way street, and it doesn't mean it's your fault. Two, allow time to grieve. Just like any loss, you're gonna move through the stages of grief. Being cut off from someone, it's crushing. And when someone leaves you without answers, it's really tough. Even though there might be a reason for this breakup, try to give yourself time to grieve because you are grieving. It's something that hurts your heart. Three, try to get clarity, but don't chase answers. For your benefit, you might wanna learn the reasons, but you may need to understand that the other party may not cooperate. We have a tendency to text over and over again, and honestly, I would not recommend that. I would just engage one last time and then shift into the grieving process. Four, is it me? What else could it be? In the world of ghosting, social media and distancing, why someone won't engage with you, it really could have nothing to do with you. Check the story you're telling yourself. If you do not have a specific reason for the end of the friendship, don't come up with a painful, shameful story because it might not be your fault. Honestly, you don't know the reason and sometimes something's going on with someone else. Five, end the rumination cycle. Rumination is very natural, and those of us with ADHD have a tendency toward rumination. Allow yourself to ruminate a bit, maybe 15 minutes a day, but use a pattern interrupt to stop the ruminative cycle. This means going for a walk, changing your scene, even having yourself a new hobby so that you're distracted from that rumination cycle. Try to move away from that rumination cycle because really and truly we don't know why this happened. Six, learn from your mistakes. Who hasn't said something hurtful once? Do your best to learn from mistakes, but life lessons really rarely come easily. And sometimes we are taking on the breakup as if we did it. Try to learn lessons, but if you have no idea what happened, try not to put yourself in a position where you're supposed to be the one at fault and you're supposed to be the one learning lessons because you're willing to have a conversation and now we're gonna just have to move on. Seven, shake off feelings of shame and work towards understanding your expectations of kindness toward yourself and try to work on skills to connect to others and re-engage with other people. It's so hard and part of the grieving process may be that sometimes you don't wanna get right back out there, but trying to engage in high interest activities where you meet like-minded people or re-engage with other friends can be the best way to really 
feel like you're healing rather than feel like, oh gosh, I'm just in this cycle where I'm reliving this over and over again. You're fun, you're great, you have a lot to offer. Let's re-engage with people and be out there with people finding a healthy relationship where you have give and take and where people are willing to discuss stuff with you rather than just ghosting. Eight, look at what you offer in relationships. Make a list of your positive attributes and strength and I want you to say them out loud with me. Identify how you contribute positive to relationships. I want us to put aside all of that stuff that we've heard our whole lives about, oh, you don't text back, oh, the ADHD traits thing. That assumes ADHD is the problem and that is not the case. No one should not want to be with you because of certain traits. Your ADHD is not something that is making people not want to be with you. If they're ghosting you, then they're not able to have a mature conversation. And I want us to go to your positives. You have positive things to offer in a relationship. You're funny, you're creative, you are great cooking, you bring people meals, whatever it is. And I want us to move away from the assumption that that anything we do is why we have less than. That's not the case. Nine, diagnose what you want from relationships. Evaluate how you wanna be treated and look at what you would like from relationships going forward. Then if you meet people, you can think about the criteria of how you want it to be treated and be less willing to accept less. I have a handout I'm gonna put in the description of signs that someone may be a toxic friend and we may wanna back away from them and I'm gonna make other videos about that. And I also have a handout on signs that someone will be a good friend. 10, connect with others. Whether it's a circle of support, whether it is someone in your life, whether it is somebody who's been around since grade school, your partner, somebody at work. Research demonstrate connection is good for your physical and mental well-being, and isolation is not. And I know you're saddened and grieving but nurturing relationships, being with like-minded people and having that circle of support is really important. After a breakup, spend time with people who are good for your happiness. It's important to take care of yourself and make sure you remember to feel valuable because you are valuable. The ultimate goal needs to be moving forward and making room for better experiences. Thank you so much for everyone who stayed to the end. So many people write me about this topic and I really am going to talk about it in many different ways, but I think it's important for us to start with moving forward because it happens so much. Thank you so much. Bye friends.